know? You do not try to fix a short-term recreational relationship. When a short-term recreational relationship is broken, just get another one. We also have what you have ended up with, and that is a long-term marriage relationship. Long-term marriage relationship. So now, what is the difference between a long-term marriage relationship and a short-term recreational relationship. Now, trust me, there are some differences. Okay. <laughs> the things that I just used to describe a short-term recreational relationship were really, if I had to put them all together, all the things I described, I would say it's based on personality. And what is personality? Personality is what you use to get what you want. After all, when you get ready to go into a store and buy something, and that girl behind the counter is smiling, right, generally, or the guy behind the counter is looking pretty friendly, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're just thrilled that you happen to walk up to the counter. Not necessarily. Of course, they could be thrilled, but not necessarily. It could be that they're using their personality to conduct some business. Do you like everyone you say good morning to? Do you like everyone that, whose hand you shake? Maybe not, but it's part of our personality. It's part of what we use to get what we want. So it's personality and all those other things, those tangible things that I discussed, that go into a short-term recreational relationship. Now, for the long-term marriage relationship, it's gonna be a little different. Matter of fact, it's gonna be a lot different. It's not going to necessarily be based on personality. Because personality changes, doesn't it? Don't you, can't you have one personality when you go to work? Another personality when you go to the gas station? Another personality when you come to church? And another personality when you see your wife? It changes, isn't it flexible? A long-term marriage relationship is based on character. Character is different from personality because character isn't as flexible. Character does not change to fit the situation. Personality does. So how can you tell what an individual's character is? How do you know what someone's character is? Well, one of the ways you know what someone's character is is by watching them in a crisis because you don't change. Watch how a person acts when they get cut off in traffic. It'll probably tell you something about their character. And their vocabulary. A long-term marriage relationship is built on terms. Terms, in addition to character. You see, when you get to the point of a long-term marriage relationship, they may not really care that much what kind of car you drive. They may not care where you buy your suits so much. They might not care how much money you have. They may not care that much. You, know? you may give less credence to how she looks and you may put more emphasis on what type of person she is, right? Is that possible? Yes. You know, if, if you're in, in the place of wanting to choose a mate, you know, you want more than pretty. You want more than sexy. You want to know what is, the, what is this individual's core values, you know? What are you about? What are your morals, right? So. These are some of the differences between a short-term recreational relationship and a long-term marriage relationship that I was sharing with my daughter. Now, I've got a little questionnaire that you can kind of look at, you know, that will tell you some of the differences between liking and loving someone. Let me give you some of the liking questions. I think that blank is usually well-adjusted. It's a like question. Most people would react favorably to blank after a brief acquaintance. Someone you like. 
You know, blank is one of the most likable people I know, and blank is the sort of person whom I myself would most like to be. Those are some of the questions that would tell you whether or not you like someone. Now, I have some other questions about to help you discern the difference between liking and loving someone. I feel I can confide in blank about virtually everything. Well, you've got to love someone to start doing that, right? Because when you start confiding in someone, you're not just trying to put your best, face, your best foot forward, right? Because you might be even talking about some of your weaknesses. Is that correct? Is that, is that, is that possible? You don't share weaknesses with people that you like. You share weaknesses and confide in people with people that you love or care deeply about. True? Okay. I would do most anything for blank. You don't do just about anything for everybody. Right? Yeah. Because love is constant. Right? All right. Matter of fact, if, 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 if you really want to know the truth of the matter, if you really and truly want to know the truth of the matter, you should be able to relate every single one of these love questions to who? God. Why? Because God is love. All of these questions should fit your idea of who God is and what the nature of your relationship is with God and God's relationship with you. Okay, another question. If I could never be with blank, I would feel miserable. Don't you think that, 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 that a statement like that would, would, would fit in very well? You could put in that blank, your wife and God? I can. All right. I would forgive blank for practically anything. Would you forgive your wife? Would you forgive your wife? practically anything? Would you forgive God? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do you remember those times you got mad at God? Huh? Am I the only one that's ever been angry at God? No. You know? Has God ever taken something that you loved from you? Did you get upset? And did you forgive God? Not that he needs your forgiveness, but the way we move on to go past that is to forgive God, isn't it? Okay. All right. Okay, so now, those are the basics. You know, that's the foundation, um, that my foundation on relationships is what I've just now laid out. How does a relationship start? How does it begin? You know, well, from a psychological point of view, falling in love is like lust washing over your brain. It's really not much more than that. It's sort of designed for the attraction of two people together. There has to be some attraction. There has to be some fireworks. There has to be some excitement. Because, you know, there are all kinds of people that you may have met before you met your wife that may have been, technically speaking, a good catch. Right? You may have been a good catch to some of the women or girls that you've been with before you met your wife. But there was no spark. There was no excitement. There was no fireworks. Correct? Haven't you run into women that, that would have been a good catch? But there was no excitement there? I certainly have. You know? So, falling in love it's like lust washing over your brain, you know. Um, and this, like I said, this psychological phenomena is designed to attract men and women to each other, you know. 